On the California ballot next Tuesday is an initiative called Proposition 8, as described on the Secretary of State's website. This is an amendment to the California Constitution designed to eliminate the right of same-sex couples to marry, or in other words, to deny equal rights to marry inside the state of California. Now, I live in San Francisco. In 2000, my wife and I moved to California from Boston. And with the two boys who were born while we've lived here, we have made California our home. But as I've watched the debate on Proposition 8 develop, I've become astonished by the support it seems to have. I don't understand that support, because I don't understand how anyone who takes seriously his role as a citizen within a democracy, at least a democracy that is to be independent from the church, can support Proposition 8. I don't support Proposition 8, and I offer this short explanation why. Now, the aim of Proposition 8 is simple to state. Its objective is to deny to some what the state gives to others. The thing it would deny is the right to marry. Why? Well, astonishingly, I've heard some say that one reason is so the state won't encourage homosexuality. Not that anybody wants to punish homosexuals, or at least not anymore, or ban them from our society, at least not anymore. But the state, this view says, shouldn't be in the business of encouraging or subsidizing behavior that many believe is immoral. Now, I understand why someone doesn't want to encourage what someone doesn't like. But the notion that you can encourage homosexuality must rest upon the idea that one chooses one's sexual orientation. But does anyone really believe that orientation is a choice? Was it a choice for you? Because when I think about the idea of choice, I think about contexts in which I was pulled one way or another, like, do you want chocolate, ice cream, or strawberry? Or would you like me to wear the yellow tie or the red tie? Contexts in which I can imagine going either way, where I actually feel the pull of each, but then choose one over the other. But when I think of choice like this, I can't begin to see sexual orientation as something that I choose. Now, maybe I'm different in this respect, but I don't ever recall feeling pulled in both ways. Maybe you did, but I didn't. When I came of age for these sorts of things, I felt attracted consistently in a way that defined my sexuality. And I can't imagine having chosen differently merely because the state chooses to tax one form of orientation more strongly than another. Now, is that different for you? Did you feel that your choice could have been made different if you'd faced different set of incentives? I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying it strikes me as bizarre. That much more likely is that we wake up one day with a set of attractions that we didn't choose. And the only question is whether society will allow us to act on these attractions. I'm not saying society always should. A woman who has an attraction to have sex with 10-year-old boys shouldn't be allowed to act on that attraction merely because she didn't choose it. But I am saying that the idea that the state can fiddle with the incentives to drive people one way or another just strikes me as bizarre. The stronger argument, or at least the argument made more frequently in favor of Proposition 8, is that somehow permitting an equal right to marry will weaken marriage. But again, the question is exactly how does that happen? How is the strength of my marriage, or the strength of the concept of my marriage, supposed to be affected by whether or not people to the left of me, or people to the right to me, are married or not? Or in particular, why would the strength of my marriage be affected by the fact that on one side of my house, gay people had also sworn bonds of affection for each other, and on the other side of my house, heterosexual people had sworn bonds of affection for each other. How would that difference change my commitment and my marriage to my wife? Or better still, imagine on one side of my house there are two women who had sworn a perpetual commitment to each other publicly and openly because they loved each other and wanted to be married. And imagine on the other side of my house there is a couple who has been married, but the man in that couple had been married four times before each time cheating on his wife, and each time then remarrying. Between these two couples, which is more likely to harm the concept of, quote, marriage? 
Well, again, I don't think either affects my concept of marriage or the concept of marriage in general. But if you believe it does, if you believe that one who is allowed to marry somehow affects that concept of marriage because of who that person is, then which between these two couples harms the concept of marriage more, the gay couple or the divorced couple? It seems to me that if you believe this, it's the serial divorcer who obviously does more harm to the concept of marriage than a committed couple of the same sex. And if so, does that mean that the state has the power to ban divorce? Or to forbid someone who has been divorced from getting remarried again, all in the name of, quote, strengthening the concept of marriage? That somehow the state has the power to deny to some the liberty to marry just because he has been divorced, if the state determines that that would, quote, strengthen attitudes favoring marriage. Now, I just don't recognize such a principle as part of our tradition. Indeed, it strikes me as deeply un-American. Here in America, we don't sacrifice an individual's liberty in the name of some fuzzy collectivist concept of strengthening marriage. And if you agree with me, at least that the concept of serial divorce threatens the concept of marriage more than the concept of same-sex couple, then why would you agree that the state can't deny the right of the person who has been divorced to get remarried, but can deny the right of the same-sex couple? Now, in the end, this issue for me is really about what chance for happiness we choose to give our kids. We all should know by now that we can't control who our kids love. Kids of gay parents turn out straight regardless of what the parents want. Kids of straight parents turn out gay regardless of what the parents want. We can't control that. But we can control whether we create an environment in which whatever they choose, they have the best chance for long-term happiness. And this is what I want for my kids. Whatever they turn out to be, I want my boys to have the same chance to love and commit to someone that I was able to do with my wife. I want them to be able to experience that kind of public and open commitment and to be able to celebrate and declare it to the world just as I did with my wife. Now, why would you deny them this? Finding love is hard enough. What possible reason could we have, a reason consistent with the ideals of liberty and equality that define what America is, for denying them this chance? Vote no on eight, please.